it's a little bit more bad news, unfortunately. Uh, but we're going to start seeing AI used by attackers even more. Hi, this is Yoso Bhartia, and we are back with our yearly predictions video series. And today we have with us Dan Lawrence, CEO of ChainGuard. Dan, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure to host you here today. Of course, I'm going to ask you to grab a crystal ball and share your predictions with us. But before we go there, quickly remind our viewers, what is ChainGuard all about? ChainGuard is a software supply chain security startup. We're a little over two years old now. Um, and we're focused on providing a trusted supply chain of open source components that enterprises can grab and build and start using in all of their infrastructure. So this includes stuff like signatures and provenance and all of these things that you need for compliance, but it also includes uh, an SLA around vulnerabilities where we patch vulnerabilities and uh, deal with all of the vulnerability scanner noise that you see in your scanners when trying to consume open source safely. Excellent, thank you. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and share with us your predictions. Well, I've got a couple for this year, um, mostly around the AI ML space, because uh, that's what everyone is talking about this year. Um, you can't really do a prediction without talking about it because it's it's come out so quickly. Um, but they, they come with uh, you know, some connections back to the space that I do think I know some things in, so I'm not completely guessing and completely uh, out of left field. Um, the first one is around the supply chains for all of these AI and ML systems. Um, these AI and ML systems are kind of like software systems. They look like them if you squint, um, but the supply chains for them are actually even more complicated. Um, they have and inherit all of the typical software supply chain problems, right? These are tools and systems running in huge distributed manners um, that are producing outputs and training on data. So you have all of the typical software supply chain problems that you have to deal with in every other field of software where malware can be introduced at any point, vulnerabilities can be exploited. Um, but they also have a huge set of problems on their own, which is the training data that's fed into these models. If you squint again and look at a model, um, it sort of looks like a, uh, a model training process. It sort of looks like compiling in software. You're taking a whole bunch of data, feeding it into this big program, and you're getting some binary blob output in the end. With the compiler, that's an executable file. Uh, with an ML model training session, you're getting a model in the end. You can't easily go backwards from the model to the data it was trained on. <clears throat> but just like in software, uh, malicious code being fed into a compiler can result in a malicious binary. Um, malicious data has been shown to be able to tamper with model behavior. And it doesn't take a huge amount of data to be able to tamper with and control the output of the model in the end. Uh, so I think we're going to start seeing a big push for uh, provenance and other requirements around the data that's fed into these ML models. The second big one is just around vulnerability databases. Um, everyone hates dealing with CVEs and vulnerability databases and vulnerability management. There's a lot of noise in this system. Uh, the CVE model, uh, which is the common vulnerability and exposures database, it was designed decades ago uh, when most software was closed source, before teams were doing agile development. Um, all software had you know, fixed release numbers and you didn't have continuous development, continuous integration, and continuous deployment. Um, and the system is already sort of struggling to scale. People are entering vulnerabilities at an increased rate each year and triage teams don't have uh, the bandwidth to keep up with it. Um, AI is gonna start to push this to the limits in a couple different ways. One is that we're already seeing folks exploit LLMs and AI tools to start filing CVs en masse. Um, they're doing stuff like looking for behavior that could be malicious and then filing CVs that look like they were generated by a person just to boost resumes or something like that. It's effectively forming a denial of service attack on vulnerability triage and vulnerability management teams that are left dealing with this noise uh, and the crappy output that's coming out of it. Um, the second half is around CVs in AI workflows themselves. Uh, we don't have anything in place for this yet, but I think we're going to start seeing it as models can have behavior injected into them, uh, or training data itself will have to start getting marked as malicious or some other form of declaring vulnerabilities in the inputs to these systems or the outputs as well. Um, and then the final one, is it's a little bit more bad news, unfortunately, uh, but we're gonna start seeing AI used by attackers even more. Now, we saw one large-scale typo squatting attack last year where someone carefully created something like 55,000 repositories on GitHub that were realistic looking. Um, they had commit history and commit messages that looked like they were somewhat plausible. So at a first glance, if you stumbled on one of these projects and did a quick look, it would look like it was an active project in many ways. 
Um, unfortunately, this uh, is only going to get worse with AI when it's going to be much, much, much easier to generate realistic looking projects. I think we're going to see a couple large projects over the next year that aren't real. And it's going to take a whole bunch of skilled humans a long, long time to forensically realize that and determine that. Perfect. Thanks for sharing these predictions. Now, what kind of challenges do you see are going to be here this year for the whole ecosystem to deal with? Scale is kind of the biggest theme of all of this. Um, there's more and more software, more and more open source software being used, and developers are getting much, much, much better at using open source software. Um, and so it's pushing all these systems to the breaking limits. AI is going to make that worse. It's going to provide more software, right? Everyone loves the co-pilot demos where you can churn out hundreds of lines of code in minutes. Um, it's all going to combine to increase the scale of software we're dealing with, the scale of vulnerabilities we're dealing with, and the overall inventory management problem. Um, I think the flip side is going to be that we're going to have to use these same technologies for good. That usually just comes a little bit later as we figure out how to harness them to deal with all of the problems that they introduce. Now, looking at these uh, predictions and these challenges, what is going to be the focus of ChainGuard this year? One theme here that we've noticed and sort of surprised me, so we'll see if my crystal ball is a little bit better this year than it was last year, um, the rate at which these AI and ML frameworks are being used by enterprises, particularly regulated ones, is much, much, much faster than I, than I expected. Um, you know, one of the last large disruptive technologies in the industry, let's say, you know, containers, they blew up back in 2016, 2017, but enterprises didn't really start using them in anger until the last couple of years. These migrations took half of a decade uh, in some of these large regulated enterprises. I sort of predicted that AI would be you know, faster than that, but still a little bit slower. Um, but we're seeing these software packages, uh, these AI ML frameworks being used in some of the most regulated industries in the world you know, months after they get released. So the rate of that adoption is incredibly fast. But that's bringing with it a lot of challenges um, because normally it takes a while for this stuff to mature and get to a pace where it's slowed down enough to be used in these environments. Uh, but these enterprises need to use it fa uh, faster than they can really deal with. So we're going to see a little bit of friction here as all this brand new stuff makes its way into sensitive environments way faster than it normally would in a normal technology adoption cycle. So we're going to be focusing on that, trying to make it easier for enterprises to use this open source that they need to use to get their jobs done. Dan, thank you so much for taking time out today and share this prediction with us. And of course, I'd love to have you again next year to not only see how many of your predictions turn out to be true, but to get the next set of predictions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Put me on the record. We'll see how well I do.